Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look for a, a set of transformations from a coordinate system S, where we have coordinates for space-time points uh, denoted as T, X, Y, Z. We're going to transform them to a new set of coordinates, C, T prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime, which are related to the old coordinates through this four by four transformation matrix lambda. And the matrices lambda satisfy the equation that we've written over here, where G is the space-time metric, that is, it's this quantity. This particular four by four matrix. Okay. Now, uh, before we start looking for particular matrices lambda, uh, I want to make a claim, uh, which we will justify. That is, the set of all such matrices, or the set of all such transformations using uh, lambda, set of all such transformation matrices lambda form a group and this group is called the Lorentz group. Okay. So what is a group? Let me just remind you the mathematical sense uh, of the definition of a group. So a group in mathematics uh, consists of a set, okay, uh, a set of elements, uh, which we'll denote as lambda one, uh, lambda n. It, it could be a finite or an infinite set. And uh, this set of elements has a group operation on it. That is, we can take any two elements of the set and using the group composition law, uh, this composition tells us what we would get when, when we take two elements of, of this group. Okay. Now, uh, if you get back another element of this set, then you satisfy the axiom of closure. Okay. So that is under the group operation, lambda three also belongs to the group. Okay, so this set, let's call it a G, okay, uh, is the set. And lambda three belongs to the set. That is, if I take a group operation where I take two group elements, compose them, then I get a third group element. Note that it's not necessary that uh, lambda 2, lambda 1 gives you back the same element lambda 3, okay? Uh, this is not a necessary criteria. So the operation has a particular ordering to it. That is, uh, lambda 1 acting on lambda 2 need not be the same as lambda 2 acting on lambda 1, okay? So the first property is closure. That is, when I compose two group elements, I get back a third element belonging to the same set. The second property is associativity. That is, if I take a composition of lambda 1 acting on the product of lambda 2 and lambda 3, since lambda 2 and lambda 3 belong to uh, the set G by the closure property, Lambda 1 acting on those should also belong to the set G. This should be the same as first composing lambda 1 with lambda 2 and then acting on uh, the element lambda 3 and then seeing what we get. So this property is called associativity. Uh, and a group, uh, the group operation should satisfy this property. 
Uh, the third property is the existence of an identity element. That is, within the set G, there should be an element which we'll denote as E. And this element E is such that if we take any lambda belonging to this set, okay, and compose it with E, we would get back that element. Uh, and it doesn't matter which order in which we compose them, this would be the same as E dot lambda as well. Okay, so such an element E, which satisfies this relationship for all lambda belonging to G, uh, is called the identity element. This is identity element E. And the fourth property is that uh, there is an inverse element for every element lambda of the set. And this inverse element we'll denote as lambda inverse. Okay, this is a different member of the set than lambda. And uh, the group satisfies the property that lambda dot lambda inverse is E. And this is also true for uh, the reverse dot product. Okay, so for every matrix lambda, there or every element of the set uh, G, uh, there is a matrix or another element lambda inverse such that this dot product, okay, is equal to the identity element. So these are the four key properties that uh, the composition law of a group must satisfy. Okay, so to define a group, I need to specify the set and I need to specify the group operation. And as long as the group operation satisfies these four properties, uh, then we can say that the set along with the operation forms a group. Now, there is an additional property that some groups satisfy, but not all, which is uh, the property of commutativity. That is, if I take two elements, lambda one and lambda two, if lambda one dot lambda two is the same as lambda two dot lambda one uh, for any lambda one, lambda two belonging to G, then the group is said to be commutative. The group operation is said to be commutative and the group is called abelian. Okay, so to give you an example of this, uh, let's consider group of uh, real numbers. Okay, the group of real numbers uh, that is uh, what we call R. Uh, actually, let's take a sim simpler group. Let's consider the group of integers. Uh, which we'll denote as Z. So the set is all integers. So uh, let's say uh, from starting from arbitrarily small negative numbers, going all the way up to arbitrarily large positive numbers. And the group operation is addition. And uh, obviously this group operation satisfies the closure property. If I add two integers, I get a, a third integer. So it satisfies the closure property. It satisfies associativity because the order in which I add the integers doesn't matter. It, it has an identity element under additions. So that identity element is zero. So anything added to zero gives me back the same element and that element belongs to the set. So this is the identity element. 
it also uh, there is an inverse uh, sorry one more property of the inverse is uh, that there's a unique inverse each element has a unique inverse okay that's that's a very important property so uh, we see that this is true for a uh, for integers under addition so for example if I take an integer let's say 10 the inverse is minus 10 because 10 plus minus 10 is 0 that's the identity element of the group plus is the group operation. Uh, okay, so for every element, I have an inverse and the inverse is unique, okay? There's only one thing that I can add to 10 to get back zero. Okay, so therefore the set of, the group of integers under addition, or the set of integers under addition forms a group. So really the way to say it is integers under addition forms a group, okay? However, if I take uh, integers under uh, multiplication, you would see that that would not form a group, okay? So if I take the set of all integers, z, uh, minus 10, minus 1, 0, 1, and so on. And uh, I take the op group operation to be multiplication. Uh, you would see that I could satisfy the closure property. The product of two, uh, two elements would give me a third element. There would be associativity of multiplications because multiplication, the ordering of the multiplications doesn't matter. There would be an identity, okay, because for um, uh, one is the identity element, that, uh, and, uh, because one multiplied by anything would give me back that same entry of the, uh, that same element of, of Z. However, there would not be an inverse element, okay? That is the inverse of 10 should be something that I multiply with 10, so that I get back the identity element one. And this inverse of 10 is 0.1, okay, or 1 tenth, and that does not belong to the set of integers. So therefore, integers under multiplication do not form a group, okay? And the other thing that you'll see is integers under addition, uh, they form a group, and not only do they form a group, this group also has an additional property, which is, of um, commutativity, that is the ordering of the addition operation doesn't matter. A plus B is the same as B plus A. So this group is also uh, an abelian group. Okay. So, but this is an additional property. Uh, this property of being abelian is an additional property which is not required for all groups. The so groups are only required to satisfy the properties of closure, associativity, identity, and uh, having an inverse element, okay? Groups which do not satisfy the commutativity are called non-abelian groups. All right. That, that is, there exist at least some elements of the group such that lambda one dot lambda two is not the same as lambda two dot lambda one for these groups. 